Here's our last example on vertical asymptotes and holes. For this function, notice that I have a partially factored numerator. That means I have a linear term here that's just a single factor, and I have this term, which is a quadratic expression. This factor here is a quadratic expression, which I can factor further. Um, when we're looking for vertical asymptotes, and or holes, um, we work with the denominator. But before we do that, remember we said that we can rewrite this expression and factor it completely before we start anything else so that it's ready for us for when we need it. Okay, so let's just start by factoring. I can factor this quadratic term into two factors, and this is x, x, plus 5 plus 1 times x plus 5, which is the term that was there originally, divided by x plus 5 cubed times x minus 1. And again, without doing anything at all, I already know I have a vertical asymptote at x equal 1. I also know I have another vertical asymptote at x equal negative 5. How do I know that? Because I have, re I have common factors in the numerator and denominator. x plus 5 and x plus 5 I also have in the denominator, x plus 5. And I know that I need to compare their multiplicities. So x plus 5 times x plus 5 is x plus 5 squared. That means this 0 repeats itself twice in the numerator, and it repeats itself three times in the denominator. So the multiplicity in the numerator is less than the multiplicity in the denominator. That means this is a vertical asymptote. Okay, so see how convenient it is to have this already factored out completely because I, without doing anything at all, just by looking at it, you can determine how many asymptotes you have, how many holes, etc. But we're going to work through it on your quiz. You have to work through it. You have to show your steps. So let's do the steps. First thing I do is I set my denominator equal to 0. And remember, you can use this denominator or that one. Well, in this case, they're exactly the same because they're equivalent. Okay, and we set our denominator equal to 0, x plus 5 cubed times x minus 1. And what I do is I take my factors and I use the zero product property and this tells me that x is equal to negative 5. And the multiplicity for the zero is 3. It's an odd multiplicity and it's multiplicity 3. That means this is a repeated zero and it repeats itself three times. x minus 1 equals 0, x equal to 1. And this has multiplicity 1. And now our next step is check. Check these values, these possible, these are possible vertical asymptotes. How do we know if they are or not? We check in the numerator. If I get a zero in the numerator when I check these values, then I have to determine if it's a vertical asymptote or a whole. If I do not get zero in the numerator, I'm good to go. It's a vertical asymptote, okay? So let's check negative five. Negative 5 plus 5 is 0. I got a 0 in this factor. 0 times anything is going to be 0. So I'm not going to bother to plug negative 5 in here or negative 5 here. Just with one of the factors giving you 0, anything you multiply by 0, you get 0. So already I know with x equal to negative 5, I'm going to get 0 in the numerator. That makes me have 0 in the numerator and in the, and in the denominator. So now I have to look at the multiplicities of this 0. The multiplicity of x plus 5 in the numerator is 2 because I have this 0 repeating itself twice in the numerator, 1, 2. So the multiplicity is 2. And in the denominator, I have this 0 with a multiplicity of 3. So the multiplicity in the numerator is less than the multiplicity in the denominator. That means that this is a vertical asymptote. Okay?
if I had gotten a greater multiplicity in the numerator than, than in the denominator, then it's a whole. If I had had the same multiplicity in the numerator and denominator, it's a whole also, okay? But when the multiplicity is greater in the denominator than it is in the numerator, then it's definitely a vertical asymptote. For x equal to 1, let's check in the numerator. If I plug in 1 here, I get 6. If I plug in 1 here, I get 2. 6 times 2, 12. And if I plug in 1 here, I get 6 again. And 12 times 6 is 72. I did not get 0. When that happens, it's very easy because it's a vertical asymptote. So I have a vertical asymptote at x equal negative 5, x equals negative 1. You're done. There are no holes in this function. Okay? You're done. If I would have gotten one of these zeros and I'd determined that it's a hole, then I have to go one step further and find where the hole is exactly. Since there are no holes in this function, I don't have to do that step, okay? I hope this helps. I wanted to give you an example with a partially factored function, and here it is. I hope you understood. I hope this makes it clear. Now we're going to go on to horizontal asymptotes.